Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to remove the battery cover. After you have that removed, then you want to remove the battery itself. Once the battery is moved, you want to take your T5 and start to unscrew the four screws. Then after that, you have to separate the housing. Use a case opener tool to perform this task. And you want to put it between the two connecting pieces in the crease, as you can see here. And just slide it, and it should snap out of place. Make sure to do this all around. Make sure to be very careful that you do not crack the case when you're doing this. Uh, patience is the key when doing this. Then you can remove the housing after everything is separated. And there you will see the main board, motherboard. First ribbon cable you want to disconnect is the one there with the little dot on it. Uh, first you want to uh, of course take out this last screw and then you want to disconnect the ribbon cable. Let's label with a dot right there. Then after that you need to very carefully lift the main board and there is the LCD ribbon cable that is connecting. As you can see right here, and you just pry that down. There may be some tape holding that in place, so you want to pry the tape down as well. And then you should be able to lift the main board off of the keyboard assembly. The next thing you do is you need to disconnect the ribbon cable for the keyboard, which is shown here and then you remove the actual keypad there, the touch keypad and this is a soft uh, touch keypad that's on which is the one that you actually press when you're using the device and there's nothing wrong with this one it was just worn some of the letters as you can see are kinda of black it was worn so the user just wanted to have it replaced make sure to put everything back in and align it Then place the keypad touch button assembly and make sure that it is seated properly. There are uh, two little tabs that actually hold it into place and then once you screw in the actual screws again it, it will uh, also tighten it. And then you put the ribbon cable back on or reconnect it. and then from there you want to put the motherboard assembly back on uh, this can be kind of tricky so please be very patient
once you have that, make sure to reattach the second ribbon cable, the one with the dot on it that you see me lifting there. Align everything up and seat it back into the bezel. and the ribbon cables are attached then you double check make sure everything's aligned all the ribbon cables are firmly pressed down and then you want to put the back housing cover back on and then you want to make sure that you screw in the uh, first screw I didn't show it in the video and I apologize but make sure to screw the the main screw that screws the motherboard down then put the cover on and then it insert these four screws and tighten them Once this is done, you can then make sure that the keypad seated properly. And as you can see here, it looks brand new. Go ahead and you're going to want to reinsert the battery. And then you will want to reinsert the battery housing cover. And then from here, you will power on the device. And then we move on to testing. So the device should be powering on in just a moment. And there you go. Okay, and the next thing to do would be go, go into any application that allows you to write text, so like a text message or email or what have you. Uh, right now I'm double checking the track wheel to make sure that still worked. Um, but basically go into any messaging program and basically act like you were going to type out a message or you can actually compose and send an actual message. In this case it doesn't have a SIM, so I just chose to, to compose an email and I'm just pressing all the... Uh, numbers and letters and everything on the keypad to make sure they're working and you can see across the screen here although it may be a little bit hard to see that um, all of them are in fact working and that is it we have successfully changed the keypad on the singular AT&T 8525 device